Welcome to the League of Kings podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guaranteed laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Hey, kings and queens, welcome to the first episode of the League of Kings podcast. And I want to, you okay over there, big brother? I'm going to go ahead and bring you on in since you squinting over. Uh, one of one of the hosts, resident big brother. How you doing, King? I'm good to go. Good to hear you. Good to see everybody. How's everyone? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, your other host is J. Dot Flan. How you doing, King? Man, I'm uh, I'm chilling. Kid free weekend. Oh, hanging out with y'all. Okay, okay. And your fo- fourth host would be Bo Talk by Joe. What's up, Joe? Hey, everybody. I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Okay, okay. Uh. For those of y'all that this is uh, our first time and this is y'all's first time, but this is the League of Kings podcast. And we are four individuals that decided to come together to make something epic, something dope, something educational. This is a safe home, a safe place for conversation for men. Uh, women are are welcome to join. Queens, our queens are welcome to join. Uh, this is actually <clears throat> kind of spawned off the uh, something I would do called the pull up, and I would invite all my brothers and kings over, and we we would talk and have a conversation. So we just say, hey, let's just make it official. So that's what we did, and that's why you're here. Kings, y'all want to um, add anything to that before we um, start the show? No, I think you summed it up pretty good, Willie. Yeah. And you stay on your side of the line, so I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like Will said, everyone is welcome. You're going to get some great content, some good conversations. And we welcome everyone to the first episode. We're all excited to be here. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Okay. I... Uh, you know, I'm I'm super excited, and I think that uh, it's going to be a great show, and, and people are going to love this show. So we're going to bring a lot of uh, we bring a lot of good stuff to it. So um, I'm ready to roll, man. Sweet. Well, let's get it going, then. Yes, sir. Let's do it, Joe. How do you yes, know? Sir. How do you know when it's when it's time to move on from a friendship? Oh man. Well. You know, when they can't keep a secret, I think that will be for me. And when you can't keep a secret and I'm telling you, like, hey, man, I need you to keep a secret. And uh, whatever happens, happens. You need to be quiet. And uh, if they are going around talking to everybody, I feel like that's to me will be betrayal. You know what I mean, so that's that right there is enough. You know, that would be. That to me would be. Uh, moving on from a friendship like that because you know friends you know your real friends right you you want to you want to confine stuff to them you wanna you tell them things that you just wouldn't tell everybody right mm-hmm. so if that person's already broken that part then can't trust them anymore so it's the betrayal part for you yeah okay you know i, I forgot to introduce myself I am Willie. <laughs> I am Willie, your resident habitual line stepper. So <laughs> get comfortable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, trust is a very important thing in a friendship. Uh, J. Dot, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with Joe. Um, loyalty is a big thing. I think I, I heard once like uh, real friends – you know, talk shit about you in person and uh, and protect your name in private. So it's like, you know, when, when you're not around the people who uh, 
you know, we'll still protect your name and take care of, of your reputation, you know, even when you're not there to hear it. I think that's important. Um, for me, I kind of know when it's time to move on when, uh, then when the friendship becomes unbalanced, you know, when I realize that you may be around for more of what I can do for you and, uh, and very rarely are you ever offering anything or, you know, bringing in, bring anything to the table, um, that I benefit from. I only hear from you when you need something mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, or things like that. I, I realize like most of my closest friends, uh, we almost rarely speak. But it's, you know, it's an understanding that, you know, if, if at any moment you needed me for anything, you know, I'm there. I know I got people that I could call and they, you know, they catch, get on a, on a plane at a moment's notice if that's what it was. But we might not talk for, you know, once every three or four months or something like that. I have to remind myself to shoot them a text message every once in a while. But those are probably the people that are closest to me. The people I hear from every day uh, are usually folks that I hear from them every day because they need they need something from me at that time. And I'm trying to get better with that and realizing that, you know, when I'm being taken advantage of and, uh, and removing myself from those situations, but it's difficult for me. I know, I know exactly what you're speaking of. Cause I'm one of those people. I'm one of those friends. If we friends, I'm going to be your friend. So I'm going to be the one that, 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 gonna call you all the damn time text you all the damn time pop up on you you know or you know you hungry okay let then i come pick you up we go get something to eat or i drop you off something to eat you know what i'm saying you sick i'm gonna drop you off some orange juice you know something you know that, that help you get back to who you were you know for the friendship you know what i mean so that that's the kind of friend I am, I tend to, I guess, overdo it. I don't, I won't say overdo it, but a lot of the energy that I put out, I don't get back. You know what I mean? So I have to question that. It's like, is this really a, is this like really, is this really a two way street or is this just a one way street because they know I have a good heart? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I I feel you on that. Big brother, uh, how do you treat your friends? (laughs) <laughs> um <laughs> no uh i used to not know how to move on from friendships mm-hmm. but then when you start to heal a lot about yourself you start to recognize kind of, and i can what all of you said you know from joe's trust to you saying being taken advantage of to j dot saying that um you know on it's more of a beneficial on one side type thing and for me To add on to that, I think is for me when I know it's time to move on from a friendship is when there are a lot of side conversations either without me or about me. Mm -hmm. And when I start to see stuff like that happen, along with everything that everyone touched on, I start to say, yeah, you know, I don't think this is really a friendship. And then I can kind of start having conversations with myself like, yeah, I just need to distance myself and you know that's when i start to know like i need to move on from this friendship or put a lot of space in between me and these friends but do you do you think that we all kind of not we all have those type of thoughts about you know are they are they talking about me because i told them something or are they telling somebody do, do don't we all kind of have that in the back of our head sometimes. Even it, I mean, it, it can be grasshopper to a knee-high friend, or it can be somebody that mm-hmm. you just met. I mean, don't we all kind of, in the back of our minds, like, man, I, I, I wonder if he's telling them what I told them. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we all have those thoughts. And, you know, I'm speaking from personal experience where mm-hmm. it was conversations I knew that were had. Right wasn't so much me i wonder if they're talking about me but it was just conversations i knew that they were having and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so like i said that there and everything that everybody else touched on from joe talking about whether i can't trust y'all anymore or with secrets and things or like j dot said you know it's kind of one-sided or like you said they're taking advantage of your generosity slash good heart you know it's all in a like a soup bowl for me like all uh, everything y'all said along Mm -hmm. with that um you know there's a lot of conversations outside of me and 
let's go do stuff but not invite him mm, okay so do I, you I agree I think we all have those those thoughts you know uh I think luckily for me I had some like real friends that kind of taught me to like that if somebody really you know really fucks with you like that that's not something you have to worry about mm-hmm. I tell a quick funny story because I like to tell stories but uh back when I used to be a rapper or whatever uh my best friend was my producer. The studio was at his house. And one night we were over there and I had one of my drunk moments. And uh, I tell a story about it on my show. It's the, the chicken slap of uh, 1999 or whatever. I, I slapped some chicken out of a girl's hand because we were having an argument about Tupac. Joe, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I got home after all of that and uh, I woke up the next day and I just, you know, in my mind, my recording career is over. Like I'll never be able to record with them dudes again. They, you know, I can only imagine what they're talking about today that I'm not there. I'm, I'm writing, I'm coming up with plans for how I'm going to handle the, the diss tracks that's going to come out and, mm-hmm. and what my responses are going to be. And in the middle of all of that, I get a phone call from my, my, my buddy and he's like, hey man, you know, you coming to the studio today, we, we ready to work. And I was like, I'm, I'm still allowed in there. Like, I'm still, I'm, we still cool. And he's like, man, everybody has a, a bad night. Like, move on. And I just, like, so I know with him, even on my worst days, you know, you know, we may he if he's gonna make a joke about it, I'm gonna be there to hear it. He's not gonna be talking about me behind my back. But I had to learn that from mm-hmm. being around some people that really cared about. If y'all if y'all have listened to that episode, yeah, y'all need to listen to that episode. I forgot what it's called, but it is hilarious the way he paints the picture of how he slaps the chicken wing out of this girl's hand because she wouldn't let it go. Let it go. She wouldn't let it go. He was being the bigger man. I'm this. I'm trying to picture where did the chicken wing like? What she like doing? You know how females they stick their finger in your, in your face and they're trying <laughs> to tell you like it's the chicken. You know what? We'll we'll talk about that. Uh, do y'all find it difficult to make new friends? Uh, you know, I I think. I think a lot of people, they just don't, um, I feel like they don't know, like, like you were saying, you can put out all that energy, but maybe just, they just don't know how, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe some of these people just don't know how, and I feel like that's the hardest part about trying to find friendship is, um, we could be like enthusiastic and we want to be their friend and we think they're cool and everything's all right, but maybe they just don't know how. You know, I feel like some people are like that. They're just like, oh, I don't know. You know, they just they don't know how to act. They don't know how to react, and uh, they give out the wrong signals sometimes. I feel like that. You know, to me, that's that's the hardest part. Is, you know, because I'm like you, I'm like you, Will. You know, I'm just like you want to be my friend. We're we're friends. You know what I mean? I'll help you out, whatever mm-hmm. whatever is needed. Uh, but some people might come out as standoffish because they just don't know how to act. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like breaking that, trying to break that in there. And, and I mean, but yeah, I mean, it's for me, it's hard to find some friends, you know, especially with the things that I do, podcasting and all kinds of stuff. And, and some people don't like that either. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to find friends. Um, you, you, they have to like this kind of the same stuff as you do almost. And not, not almost, but. You know, they kind of have to be interested on in what you do. You know, I feel like if I'm your friend, I'm going to be interested on in what you do, you know, because you're my friend. Uh, I might not like it or I might not agree with all this stuff, but you're my friend. You know what I mean? And they're trying to get people like that to be interested on in what, you know, on you, on your personality, on who you are. It's it's hard. Mm. Big brother, what about you? Uh, Yeah, it, like. Once you become an adult, at least for me, like adult, you know, it is a little bit more like a project to make friends. Yeah. It becomes more of a project where you got to make sure because, you know, once you grow up a little bit, you start having your what does this person want from me? You know, like that type of feeling, you know. But, yeah, it's a little difficult making friends. And kind of like Joe said, you know, I'm not going it's hard to be friends with someone who's 
not just interest, but their behavior is just way out there. You know, you might be fine to hang around every now and then for a couple of laughs, but to make like a solid friend, it, it's a little bit harder, at least for my sake, in the, when you become an adult, you know, because you got to you got to work through all the, um, you know, insecurities, past bullyings and, you know, friends that may have done you wrong. And then you're like, all right, this person seems like a good person, you know we can start developing a friendship. Okay. <clears throat> J-Dot? Yeah, I have difficulty finding uh, or making real friends. Um, I think, unfortunately, and this is probably like a uh, more of a negative knock on me, there, there are probably more people who view me as a friend mm -hmm. than I view as a friend. There are probably people who think they're closer to me uh, than they really are. And, uh, and then I have the... Uh, I have the tendency of like, because I, because of, you know, being a short, smart kid growing up and being like the nerd and, and ostracized in some places, I have like a, a tendency to want to befriend people that I see don't have friends. And then usually almost every time, nine times out of 10, I find out why they don't have friends. You know, it's like the people who have decided to ostracize this person were not a hundred percent wrong. Like, right. you know, you stepped into a, a minefield. And so, uh, yeah, that, that's what I run into. So I, I don't find it difficult to like meet people or, or have people that, that want to be friends. Uh, I do find it difficult to find like good people or real friends, you know, to be around. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. There's a lot of people that I didn't know that thought that we was really friends just because, <laughs> just because I was being nice, yeah. speaking, you know, help. Being, You don't have to be somebody's friend to be helpful. You know, if they need a yeah. hand with something, you know, it's just being nice. You know what I mean? So, and then you kind of throw in, like, social media, like Facebook and shit. You know, people sending me, inboxing me, why you delete me? Because I wanted to. What do you mean? But we was friends. No, that that's just how they have it set up on Facebook. That that doesn't really be <laughs> with friends, you know. That, that that's not, that's just that's that's just the title of it. That's like the marker of how you find people. They just call it friends. They don't have like an uh, associates, you know, tab. They don't have like, eh, he's all right, tab, you know. But I I've, I've I've came across that a lot. You know, especially, you know, with co-workers and stuff, you know, we, we not, we co-workers, we not friends, but. Don't get that. I tell people I, I have brothers and I have people I know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you're a brother, I, I'll go to war behind you. Mm -hmm. but, you know, other than that, if we not at that level, then you just yeah. another person. I, you know, and I try to treat everybody with respect. So it might seem friendly. Right. It's right. me. Being me, that doesn't mean I like you. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I, I've, I've, I've got that a lot. It, it, it is hard for me to find friends. You know, we've talked about it once before. You know, just being an introvert. You know, sometimes I can just tell by you know, like the way you chew your food, or the way that you answer your <laughs> phone. I don't like that. You know, this. I, I'm, I'm at that age now. Like, the older you get, the smaller your circle gets. True. It really does. The older you get, you you don't tolerate a lot of bullshit. <laughs> you just don't. Hey, man, look, we're going to go up to, we're gonna go up here. We're going to meet up at 5. You pull up at quarter till 6, and I'm walking out. Yeah, you you going down to the bottom of the of the, of the list, man, because that, that, that's – that that's something that I, I I can't I can't deal with. You know what my uh my you know what my thing is, and I apologize if any of you brothers fit the description. You are my brothers, so understand I you'll get a pass if you do. But uh, people who who walk and don't swing their arms like that just <laughs> that bothers me to my soul. Like if you walk and you don't have no arm swing, like I, something's wrong with you. I believe your soul is fucked up, and I just. Yeah, it's going to do something with you know how close we could possibly be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it is very. Yeah, Are you it, seeing somebody walk without swinging their arms. Yeah. I guess. 
Hey, quick, a hey, quick story since you brought that up. It's a quick story. So I was on a forklift one day, you know, like I was at a stoplight. The warehouse where I was at, we had to like drop the forklifts across the street. So I was at the stoplight, and one of the guys from one of the other departments was walking across the street. So I'm just sitting there, and he's like, "Hey, Willie," and I'm like, "Hey." You know, give him the little, hey, I'm friendly, but stay over there. You know, hey. And he was walking down the street. but He's walking on the sidewalk. And then he, I heard his foot hit the edge of the sidewalk. Papers went everywhere. He tripped. He rolled down the sidewalk. Do you hear what I said, big brother? He tripped. And he rolled down the sidewalk. Papers going everywhere. I kind of think I know your reaction, but go. No, my reaction was I'm the only one who sees this. Like nobody else, like there was no other cars. It was just me. So I'm looking around and I just like kind of drive. I'm like, hey, beep, beep, you good? He's like, yeah. And I just (laughs) kept on because I had the green light. I had to go. I couldn't stay. I couldn't. I couldn't stick. I couldn't do. I couldn't stick around, Big Brother. So I'm trying to say, but he was good. But that was that. It just reminded me of that because the way he was walking, he wasn't. That's why he fell. That's why he tripped because he wasn't swinging his arms. Right. His balance was off. <laughs> his ba- yes, his balance yes. Off. His balance was off. Yes. So. <laughs> Excuse not, me, uh, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. How did you trip? Well, I wasn't swinging my arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anybody. Walk without swinging their arms. Oh, they're out I there. I have to look it up. They're out there. That's I'm weird, kidding. man. It's, yeah. it's nasty. Something wrong. Something wrong it's with it. It's kind of like you have to swing your arms. It's partly the natural way of walking, I would think, right? I mean, my, mine is very exact and precise. I did the whole junior ROTC, so I have the military thing, like six to the front, three to the rear. Like, I, So I'm just calculated. You know, mm-hmm. It's a certain distance ahead of me, a certain distance behind me. Yeah. I prefer that, but at least <laughs> swing, do something. Yeah. Equilibrium together. Yeah. That's weird. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to derail the show. No, you good. You good. We got to t- talking about stories. I got I got quite a few of them. Uh Big Brother, uh, what did you want to um be when you grew up when you grew up? I don't know, just a little bit of everything. I you know, of course, you know, when you're a little kid, I want to do this, I want to do that. But what comes to mind usually probably would be um i used to want to be like a a lawyer for some reason you know the law always interests me and and things like that i always wanted to be in some type of law enforcement not law enforcement but like you know like law some type of law okay okay i can see that yeah i can i can too yeah you'd be good at de-escalating situations big brother i, I can see that you, you would keep things well, oh, I, I can actually see him as the, as a bailiff as well. Mm. You yeah. know, kind of like, hey, sit down. She told you to sit down. You know. Yeah. What about you, Dayjot? What would you uh, What you want to be when you when you grew up? Uh, I don't know. I um, from an early age, I was like, I guess, trying to impress adults. So I, I can remember being in elementary school, telling folks that I was I was going to go to the Air Force Academy. I was going to major in aeronautical engineering. I was going to retire at 40. This, I was saying this in elementary school. I was going to retire at 40, and then I was going to go and teach. Uh, I don't think I actually wanted to do any of those things, but it sounded real good when I said it. So that's all I can remember. Hmm. Okay. It's, it's, it's sad that what you thought at 40 then is not 40 now. No. That that That's really the sad part. To be honest, Joe, what you want to be when you uh, when you grow up? I wanted to be a, an athlete. I wanted to be a sports athlete, a basketball player. That's what I wanted to be. Um, watch my father; he was a he was a an athlete, baseball player, and all I wanted to do was kind of be like him, but without playing baseball. So. That's what that was. That's what I wanted to be. And then after, you know, I, after a little bit, I wanted to be a uh, like a combat medic. 
Wow. I mean, it's just something that since I was a kid, those are the two things that I always wanted to be. And uh, I, I didn't I didn't do any of them. <laughs> Obviously, I uh, wasn't, uh, you know, basketball player. I played basketball my whole life. But, um, you know, it takes a you have to have a certain gift for both of those things. So, mm. but it was fun to, to think about it. You know what I mean? Just to to dream of what it, it I, I look at it as a good thing. Because they're, I think they're both good things. One of them, one of them is a dream, right, to be an athlete of some sort, and the other one is, uh, it's good. You know, I want to help people. I didn't want to do the, I didn't want to do do the killing. I wanted to go help the, the people. You know what I mean? I wanted to yeah. go help the people that were hurt. Basically, mm. that's kind of, it's uh, to me, it's, I feel like it's exciting. I don't know. Okay. Well. At one point, I wanted to be a. Um, I was a big Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy fan mm. growing up. Movies, stand up. So I wanted to be a comedian at one okay. point. But also, I grew up watching Rambo. <laughs> yeah. And Death Wish. So deep. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to be like a Green, Ber- a Green Beret, but like a slash vigilante at the same time. That's oh, like man. killer one liners before you kill somebody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this like this that was Charles Bronson, right? Death Wish? Yeah. 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 Like this yeah, just give him like this horrible joke before I take him out. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Knock, knock. Yeah. <laughs> Who's there? Death. <laughs> uh, comedians, uh, that's, yeah, Will, I, I see it. I could definitely see you being a, a comedian. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you have that, uh, you have that thing, that poise, and at the same time, you say, like, these little things out of nowhere that yeah i see it the um, cool the um yeah it it, then if i had came out with a book it would have been random acts of violence that's what the book would have been (laughs) (laughs) wait what happened You know those things you uh, you you can find in drugstores where it, it, it come with the little plastic knife and the little plastic gun. I just see Will always wanting to buy them for himself. I do, I do. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I seen one the other day and I was in uh, Kroger's. Uh, <laughs> so if you haven't achieved it, then then what what stop you, Big Brother, from from being a lawyer? <clears throat> For me, I think it was the politics of everything where, you know, the law is the law, but sometimes the law doesn't really get the person that committed the crime. So a lot of that was that. But if I had to tell my younger self to do something else, you know, it would have still been in the law, but, you know, probably more of a FBI agent, something like that. But to answer your question, I just think it was more of the, yeah, I don't, the way the the law seems to work, and I just lost the passion for it. Okay. Dot? Uh, I just, I started hating school. Like, I hit a, it was crazy, because growing up, you know, and you guys probably relate to some of this, it's like, at the time we went to school, like I went to school where teachers could beat you in the school. Like you, mm-hmm. you messed up, a teacher could whoop you in class. No parents were coming to the school to complain about it. That's just what it was. And so I got to high school and I went to a high school like inner city, uh, in Southeast DC. And, uh, and those kids were like talking back to teachers and, you know, jumping up in their face. And I was, it was a culture shock to me. Like I was, I expected like lightning was supposed to strike you if you ever said something, you know, out of pocket to a teacher. And when it didn't happen, I was like, oh, you can, you don't, you don't have to live in fear of these people. And I just went uh, the complete opposite direction and started. I failed gym. I failed gym twice. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't think that's possible. 
Oh, I possible. failed it. Yeah, twice. I, I know people who who's failed, Jim. There was people that I never knew. The whole time we was in school until after we graduated, that they was an LD. I just I until they told me because I would see them in the hallway. See, big brother. You know, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Go. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, I see the, I see the, I see the smell, the smirk on your face, and I'm not gonna let you take me there today, brother. I'm not gonna cross that. I'm not gonna. Go ahead, Joe. But <laughs> I, uh, um, well, I, I didn't make it there because uh, it, actually, this is kind of a a, a a sad story, but shitty story. In uh, 2001, during the attacks to our country, I decided that I was going to enlist and finally make my dream come true, right? To go out there and... Um, the problem was that there were some people that were against the war. So I went and took the ASVAB test. When I took the ASVAB test, the ASVAB was uh, you had to fill in the bubbles with a pencil, right? So I went and took the test. Um uh, and it was for the Marines and everything was good past it. You know, um, you get the grade and I, I didn't get like a, a 90%. It was like a 80. So it was good enough for combat. So I was like, that sounds good. Um, well, they were, they were burning down. There were, the, there was somebody in there where it used to take the test. It was a coast guard uh, station and there was people grabbing the tests and destroying them. Because they were against the war, the same people there, and uh, eventually, this, these people were getting uh, were caught. But I took the test twice. I went back, took the test, and because uh, they were like, "We can't find any record of you uh, here, so you have to retake it." I'm like, "What do you mean? I you took me there. You took me to the you took me to the test." He's like, "We know, but we can't find some tests." So uh, they finally figured out that uh, this person was uh, destroying these tests because, you know, there were there were pieces of paper that you'll put in this computer thing and they were they were destroying the test. So after um, a while, I was they called me down to one of the stations um, to one of those recruiting stations. And they said, you know, they explained to me what was happening and they just said, um, you know, we're willing to give you a waiver, no test, no nothing. Uh, we apologize. And. Uh, we, you could do the reserves, army reserves. And I was like, nope. At that time, I was already, I was like, I could, it's just, you know, going back and forth. And I don't want to do reserves. I want to go active. Uh, and I wanted to go with the with the Marines. So uh, there was just, I was jumping back and forth because I was upset because they lost a test. So I went over to the army and took a test with them. And you go to the same station to test. Well, after I took a third a third test, and this was through a computer. And after that, I was like, I'm, I'm done. Just, I'm not gonna, so that's the reason why I never, I never did that. Mm. So there's some people that just don't like war. You know, I, I, I understand, uh, but they're willing to do whatever. So people don't go out there basically. So maybe she saved my life or he or she, you know, maybe mm. they, maybe it wasn't meant to me, uh, meant to be uh, for me to go out there. So. Okay. Hmm. Do you do you think it was because of who you were that they that they was doing that? No, no. Uh okay. there was it was random uh there was random people doing that. Um that they were uh that their tests were being because I will see them. Okay. Because we would be called back and you know, it was just different, you know, different nationalities. Um and they weren't doing them all at the same time. They were just kind of grabbing some and you know, they didn't want to look suspicious, I assume. And they were just kind of like a few, a few, a few. And, but yeah, I don't think it had anything to do with, you know, it's just these people just didn't, uh, they didn't approve of war. Mm. No. Okay. Um, as far as the comedian part, I was like, I was one of those, um, I won't say happy go lucky, but you know, if it was funny, it was funny. I would laugh. And I remember there was, there was this one time my dad said I laughed too much. And then from that, from that moment on, I just, 
it kind of like died in that moment with me, you know, wanting to be a comedian. So I was like, yeah, I don't want, I don't want to make people laugh no more. So, um, my senior, it was either my sophomore or senior year, I actually did go sign up for the military. You know, they have those uh, fires, the uh, career fairs. For high mm-hmm. school, for high school, so I went, and signed up for it. Then the next day, I was like, "Oh shit, what did I just do?" Because they called me as soon as I got home from school, the next day. And then I went through the whole, uh, I guess, the phone screening. I failed the phone screening because I'm flat footed. Back then, back then they 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 didn't they was, you know, more picky back then. Now I don't I don't think they care if you flat footed or not, <laughs> but yeah. I I, w- I was flat footed and I had uh, asthma, so it was like yeah you just been disqualified mm-hmm. and I was like oh well all right then let me go um let me go roll up this dime bag and <laughs> uh, <laughs> smoke my worry smoke, <laughs> smoke my worries away that I uh, <laughs> signed up for the military and a uh, a junior in high school. So, so yeah. So all my dreams has been crushed. <laughs> well, let me ask this if I can. Will, if you had an opportunity to do an open mic night at a comedy show, would you do it? No, I've I've had I had opportunities to do it. I used to um, years ago. I actually used to do uh, low budget films. Hmm. We're like right, and and we would film, film movies around the city, and one of the uh, one of the one of the skits apart, we was actually in a comedy club for like open mic. But yeah, no, nah, I I I I have no desire to be honest with you. Not not now. I I I don't. Um. A lot of my humor, I, I feel like it's funny to me, and then people just laugh. So <laughs> I tend to I tend to make myself laugh, and then everybody else starts laughing. But yeah, that that's um, yeah, that's where my dreams are, y'all. They <laughs> they're in a bottle somewhere in a garbage can. Um, so J Dot. How old was you when you when you recognized that you was black? Yeah, so this this was a, a interesting thing for me because my uh, my daughter she's seven, but she was born here in Austin, and she's grown up in this environment her whole life. And uh, <clears throat> you know, she in most of the places she is, you know, she's one of few, if not the only, you know, black person. So she she was at school the other day, just meeting her second grade teacher. And um, the teacher and her are having a conversation and my ex-wife is there. And at some point, my daughter like says to her, oh, you know, you're just like me. You know, you're just another color or something like that. And the teacher, you know, stumbled a little bit because she wasn't you know, ready to just have a little black girl point out the fact that she's white and and uh, and, and the girl is black. And like, how do you respond to that? As so I was talking to my ex-wife about like, I don't know how to guide her through this whole process of now realizing that you know she looks different than the people around her and and what that might mean because for me growing up you know in dc where i grew up like i i've just always been black i don't remember becoming aware of the fact that i was black you know i'm black everybody around me was black i tell her i'm not going to tell the story because uh big brother let me promise i wasn't going to say that word but we had a we had a one white girl in my elementary school uh, up until like maybe the second grade and we used to torture that little girl. I mean, it was horrible, uh, the stuff. that, we, And we didn't say, like, stuff to her about, like, something being wrong with being white. It was more like, you're not one of us, you know. Mm-hmm. But we did that, like, every day. So I've, I've always known that I was black. And I'm, like, struggling to figure out how I guide my daughter through this process of realizing that I know – that right now she doesn't understand the difference. And I, I like that and I admire that and I appreciate that about her that she doesn't have 
like these, you know, I know, I know I view the world through colored lenses sometimes because of, you know, of my racial background and what I've seen and what I know. And she doesn't know those things. So she doesn't have to view the world that way. And I like that, but I also don't want the reality of the world to catch her off guard one day because she thinks that everything's the same for everybody. And uh, it's not. So I'm like having a conversation with my ex-wife about like, we didn't have to realize we were black one day, but she does. And like, what are we supposed to do now? Like, how do we, how do we deal with that? So to answer your question, I, I don't think I ever did realize I was black. It was just innate. Like, you know, the world taught it to me from day one. Okay. I mean, you was more than welcome to continue. I, I, we're, you, you good to go. You good to go. So, uh, <clears throat> so with that being said, did you and your ex-wife figure out a way to, I guess, help guide her through this situation? All this moment? Now, it's definitely a work in progress. That's, I brought it up as a topic in the chat because it was something I wanted to, uh, like, get you guys' opinion on. Like, uh, what was that process like for you if you actually went through it? And then, um, you know, what, like I said, I don't want st- to take her innocence from her. But I also don't want to not have her prepared for the moment when the world, the world does. The world is going to do it at some point. It's going to, you know, she's going to be exposed to the realities of of what it means to be, you know, black in this country. And uh, yeah, I don't know how to prepare her for that and not take, you know, what I think is a virtue from her right now that she doesn't see a difference or doesn't understand the difference. How she's. You mind me asking? She's seven. She's seven. Okay, I thought so. Big brother. <clears throat> um, just as even as he was saying and, and talking about it, you know, there's no real one moment when I realized race. I just remember one day just realizing that, yo, there are differences in race. And one moment really jumped out to me. It was, you know, when you uh, when you're in school and you're learning about the, you know, the Civil War. Then they're like, oh, you know, it took place because of this, that, another, and these people wanted this, and so it was really just always brought up in some type of way in all my life. And when I really, I think I when I really probably started really like, yo, this is a thing i remember coming home from a store one time and there were these you know white guys and someone called me and you know just i'm just going to say it because just to say what they said to me someone called me a spook and i really never knew what that meant and when i And they said it from across the street, but I just kind of always remember being called that at at least once in my life. So ever since, you know, but I say races ever since then has just always, I've just always knew that it it would come up some type of way. But yeah, I think the world teaches us our race daily, whether you're black, Latin, whatever. The world always has a way of reminding you what race you are. And then, you know, for J died with his daughter, I just, I think, you know, as long as you and your ex-wife keep that open door of communication, you know, and make it very conversational with your daughter, you can always just have a continue, a continuous uh, conversation about it instead of, you know, like just one conversation. Yeah. As long as there's an open door conversation about it. So when your daughter has questions about race, you know, I, I think, that's a perfect way to go. Hmm. For me, <laughs> being there was very there was very few things that my dad taught me growing up. And you said Chef Lisa, she's seven, right? Seven. Yeah, be eight in December. <laughs> okay. What grade? What grade is that? Can you refresh me? Second grade. That's second grade. Okay. 
So imagine being in the second, third grade. I say, you know what? Yeah, I say third grade. And one of the movies that you will watch with your dad would be Mississippi Burning. Roots. Yeah. In the third grade. So I knew from jump, you know, spec that I was there you know that the neighborhood I grew in was all black. So the only time we would see white people was at school. So when our bus pulled up and all the black kids got off, <laughs> you know, we 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 oh, we we knew, you know, that now it, it it was a nice mixed culture, you know, with white, black, you know, we had um foreign exchange students there, you know, but it, it, it was mixture, but we knew we was black even young at that age. And I re- remember kind of going back and forth with the teacher. Like, uh, you know, we're going through history, black history. I'm like, uh, this is you. I'm, I'm missing some pages out of my book, man. She's like, no, this is it. I'm like, no, no, this ain't, this ain't it. This, no, we, we, <laughs> cause I just watched Roots last night and I know this ain't it. This, this, there's some more stuff that we, look, I was a troublemaker from the get go. Okay. Uh, woke. Yeah. I, I've been woke for a while, bro. Yeah, I, I have. <laughs> I, I remember by myself going to watch the Michael Max movie at the theater. And I was 10, 11 years old when that movie came out. And I went by myself and watched it. So, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I have the answers the answers that, that, to tell you are suggestions to help guide your child through it. Um one, the way I grew up to being guided to being black was aggressive. <laughs> now, my dad wasn't a Black Panther. He wasn't none of that, but he was a country boy. And he moved to a city. So country country living, moving to the city is two different, it's two different things. Yeah. Especially when you when you are faced with racial adversities. And 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 he was in the army, so he he got it. He got a little bit of a little bit of racial adversities everywhere he went. So that was the one thing I'm gonna say that that was probably one of the one of the things that he taught me was you know uh, y'all yeah, know how big I am about using you know the N word. Well, he would point at the TV. He was like, "That's what he's calling." the slaves that's not what you are you know what i mean so (laughs) i don't want to get too deep on y'all but all i can tell you j dot is help her embrace it help her embrace her blackness that that's my advice to you Now, whether you take advice, that's up to you and your ex-wife. I have nothing to do with, yo, you know, I'm, that's, the, that's my advice. Help her embrace it. So if she wants a backpack in the form of a chair, then give her a backpack in the form <laughs> of a chair. <laughs> or a binder. I, you know, I don't know. You know, I that's... Uh, that, see, we got the heavy side. Okay, go ahead, Joe. What about you? <laughs> the line stepper. Uh, with me, it was, um, I always knew that I was Mexican. It's just simple. I was born in a different country. Mm-hmm. So my grandparents and my parents always, uh, since the moment that I can remember, uh, let us know that we are Mexican. 
and everybody else is on the other side, right? Uh, so I always knew uh, that I was brown, that I was Mexican. and uh, But other than that, I never, there was, there was no other, there was no color to us. It was just people. But we knew that who, who we were, right? Because it's obvious once we started going to school, you're like, this is America and this is us. Like, oh, you know, but they didn't teach us to be different. They just told us that it was just a different country. It was lived differently than uh than than us right um but other than that you know uh like will said our my parents em- showed us that they they made us embrace who we were and that that is true that's what helped us is they they gave us the confidence to understand that it wasn't going to be easy and that to be proud of who you were right and it, it worked, you know, it, it does work because uh, my grandmother made sure she let us know every day, you know, you are, be proud of who you are, right? Be proud of what you, where you come from. And uh, so it, it helped us out a lot, especially growing up when we started growing up and we started getting older and you're like, holy shit, what is happening? They don't like us that much. You know what I mean? And it helped out because if my parents wouldn't have been like that, if they wouldn't have shown us how to embrace uh, stuff like this, I think it would have been a different outcome for me. I would have been a lot less, um, I would have, I wouldn't have been as confident, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, you know, ha- have her embrace who she really is and, and never to be, um, uh, never to be ashamed. There's nothing wrong with any of us. You know what I mean, but to some people, yeah, they might talk shit. They might hate, but as long as you, you teach your children, I think, to embrace who they really are and be proud of where they come from and who who they are. I think, you know, I mean, that's what helped me. Like I said, that's what helped me. So uh, I was able to deter a lot of the stuff that was coming my way mm-hmm. by just knowing that this is who I am. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm trying to prepare her for that day when she realizes, you know, there's some people out there that are not going to like her uh, for no other reason than what she looks like. And, you know, want her to be ready for that without taking the fact that she doesn't see the world that way, you know, away from her. Like, I want her to know that there, there are some bad people out here. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to look at everybody like they possibly a bad person. Can I ask you, can I ask you a question? Do you feel like she would be in mental danger if, she did not recognize that she is black and then there are white people and there are Mexicans and there are Puerto Ricans. If she just like looked at everybody as just a human, do you feel yeah, like, do you feel like that would be like a mental danger? Maybe that'd be mental danger for her. I want to say like, yes and no. Like, you know, um, a part of me is like, you, you need to know, you know, who you are and some of knowing who you are is knowing that you're different than other people. But then I also, you know, there's the part of me that says, isn't this the way we want the world to work that people don't see, you know, that they're different or that we just all look at each other as human. Uh, but you know, I'm in my mind, I'm not sure she can afford, you know, that's a luxury Mm -hmm. she can't afford to view the world as we're all just be, or she can view the world that way, but she needs to know distinctly that the rest of the world doesn't necessarily feel that same way. Just because you see everybody as human doesn't mean everybody's looking at you as human. Yeah. And I need you to be like ready for that. Yeah. I mean, in, in a perfect world, that's how it would, it should be. Yeah. No, there is no black and white, you know, no in between. It's just that we, Hey, we, we all here, we all human. We all have a purpose. In a, in, yeah, and I in, just agree, in agree a perfect with, world. Uh, with kind of like what Willie and, and um Joe were saying. Like I think they really hit it on the head with it's like embrace it. You know, it, when Joe when when Joe was just saying how his grandparents taught them and his parents taught him to embrace it. I think if we are learned to embrace our culture, and that's every culture, you embrace your culture. The ones who don't like you because of your race and culture, 
you're, she will start to see them stick out like sore thumbs. So I think that's perfect. Yeah. And even us as adults, embrace your culture. Mm -hmm. You don't, you can embrace your culture without being like those people who are hateful. So yeah, I'm just what those guys said. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like I said, I mean, it's really is up to, we, we going to give you the advice, but whether, you know, the situation, we don't know the situation in Texas. It's 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 a rabbit hole because yeah they the embracing the culture thing like I as much as I understand that sometimes I feel like the the culture doesn't embrace me and the amount of arguments I have trying to prove to other black people that I'm black mm -hmm. it's like what what is black culture like what what am I teaching them to embrace specifically you know mm -hmm. just our history which is pretty which can be traumatic if you're just introduced to you too early to know you know that this stuff happened and the people that did it look like this, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to take some work, but mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I wanted to bring it to the, bring it to the Kings. Cause yeah. I know y'all always have uh positive things to say. Yeah. Uh, if you want some more aggressive advice, then you can stick around and I'm <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> uh, watch glory. <laughs> yeah. Watch. Yeah. Watch glory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just keep going before I get in trouble. Uh, so this is the next we got coming up is the health is wealth segment, fellas. Okay. Uh, me and Jay Dot just had a conversation not too long ago off off the records about, you know, going to a doctor and stuff. So, uh, Joe, do you do you put off your annual checkup? Uh, no, no, I got to actually. A couple of months ago, I had to go do my checkup. You know, since since that guy, uh, what's his name? Oh man, um, the Black Panther. Here we. Um, yeah, he died of, of cancer, just really young. Uh, you know, that should be a reminder to all men that uh, you just don't wait till you're forty. I mean, just go get checked up, because by the time you know. You know, it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't Huey then. He he didn't he he didn't die of cancer. Did he die of cancer? No, he died of the what, system. What's his name? I don't know which one. I, I think he he I was he, 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 he was one of the, he was like one of the older ones that actually survived, but it it wasn't Huey. Um I I have to look it up. Okay. I have to look it up. Question, Joe. Right. I mean, yes. I, I know you doing some uh, fact checking. What mm -hmm. are the health risks for Mexican men? Oh, uh, well, we're kind of similar when it comes to that. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, we have a lot of um, diabetes. That is big, big time. It's just the way we cook, the way we've. Um, my, my parents, you know, my grandparents and I, you know, all that would cook with lard, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just food tastes better. Um, and so a lot of diabetes, a lot of sugar, you know, they drink a lot of that stuff, um, heart attacks. That's, you know, my grandfather passed away of a heart attack. Um, you know, that, the uh, colon cancer, you know, it's so, you know, those are, that's what runs, that's what runs and, uh, you know, Mexican people. Uh, brown people that's it's a lot of that a lot of heart heart issues and you know just overweight issues and just because of the way we eat you know we just, it just the food's delicious and you just keep eating i got you um jay dot what about you you know i uh i do put it off i i, I don't like doctors uh i, I guess this is bad and I'm trying to change, you know, so I could be around and see my little girl graduate and get married and grandkids and all that stuff. But for a long time, I, I just wanted death to like sneak up on me. You know, I just, you know, I, I didn't want to know what was coming. I didn't want to, I didn't want the, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't want the doctors to tell me 
I had this much time left or this. And I know certain things they tell me to do, I'm not going to do. If they tell me to stop eating bacon, it's just, all right, you might as well just schedule the funeral now because, you know, that's not going to happen. Or, I can't handle more Oreos or something like that. Like, you know, <laughs> we're not, why even have that conversation? Right. But I'm, I'm trying to go more now. I'm trying to go to the doctor. I just don't try. I think, I think my health is worse than what the doctors keep telling me. So I go and they tell me, you know, everything's pretty, you know, everything's pretty good. Your cholesterol is a little high and I want to go get a second opinion. Like somebody needs to tell me, you know, my kidneys are failing or my, my liver's shot or something. Mm. I live too crazy a life so far. Uh, Joe, uh, <laughs> now when I said Black Panther, I was talking about the revolution. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about the real Black ones. Panthers. DS. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. The, I'm not, not talking about Marvel. Not the Mar yeah. Damn. Oh, my bad. I don't know. How, I, how, how we Okay. Yeah, Chad Boswick. Bozeman. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Chad Wick. Yeah. We we're talking about health, so I figured you knew which Black Panther it was. Yeah. I'm with you really. But even when I saw Put Chad Chadwick Boseman in the chat. I'm like, did he play a Black Panther? And so, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of a movie he was in where he played Fred yeah. Hampton or something. Yeah. Oh, you, no, no, no. That was Marvel, Marvel guys. Come on. Well, you said Black Panthers. In in my I, mind, I'm thinking about yeah. I'm thinking about. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know if the other. Don't worry. Don't Black worry about it, Joe. It's, they it's just got off of that. Mil- <laughs> <laughs> just talking, just talking military. Fruit yeah. And, and Corey and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, no, nah, you good, nah, man. You good. good. Uh, Big Brother, what about you? Um, no, I don't put off um, doctors. Um, and of course, me, I the, I just stop, you know, I don't put them off because I always look at, you know, you always got time to go to work and do other stuff. You got to prioritize yourself. And when I started looking at it like that, like, I'm not going to prioritize anything else over my health. No, I don't skip doctor's appointments. There was a time, if anything, my doctor probably wanted me to stop making appointments. Like, stop coming. You don't need to come this much for mm. for checkups. No, nah, I I get to the doctor. Okay. All right. That was a pause moment, but I let it go. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> that was a what? <laughs> pause. That was a pause moment for sure. Yeah. Was- hey, we're going to take a quick break real quick. Well, for me, I'm I'm going to a doctor. I have to. Um, my dad, he he had cancer. One of my grandfathers on my mother's side, he had he died of cancer. Prostate, it was a prostate. Is it the prostate or colon cancer? So I've been asking about that since I was about twenty five. So at at a certain age, they don't start looking unless you start having issues. So 25, 24 was around the age when I was like, hey, do I need to go ahead and get screening? What? You know, he was like, unless you're having issues, he was like, we're not going to worry about it right now. So now I'm 42. So 42, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm trying to word this correctly. To where uh, <laughs> J. Tot is not gonna. <laughs> I'm, I'm medically speaking, it's about that time for my prostate exams. So now I heard they actually put you to sleep. That's what that's what I've been told that they you know, now you're not even woke anymore. So now you wake up fresh and renewed. I don't know what's worse. I don't know. What's yeah, worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's worse to be awake or be asleep. Now I don't know what you're doing. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You waking up? You got a you got a weird limp, and you don't know why. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Joe, I'm gonna need you to jump in this. <laughs> uh, and I'm and I'm and I'm type two, so I can't mess around because I need my feet. Type two diabetic, so. I do the I do the mental health stuff. I will go see therapists, you know, mm-hmm. psychiatrists, or whatever. I'll, I'll stay on my meds if I'm doing that for mental health. But uh, yeah, I just I just figure one day I'm gonna fall asleep and not wake up or something like that. And, uh, yeah. Did did 
did the Tuskegee really mentally jack us up to the point to where we don't want, trust doctors like like our grandfathers and uncles like they they just they won't go like they'll just get them a pint of Jim Bean and tough it out. That's not what it is for me. I just I'm not changing my lifestyle. <laughs> I don't want to hear somebody question right what I'm doing. Like I'm just, it's no point. That's all it is for me. Okay, okay, big brother. I just think it's because we it forces you to look at your own mortality. Like people are always afraid. Like I know, like a lot of people out here say they don't want to go to the doctors because it's like, I know I'm just going to get some bad news. You don't want to look at, you know, the fact that you're human and things like that. I think that's a lot of big reason that some people don't like to go to doctors, but I feel as though it's important that we bring this up. And I'm glad we are bringing this up because I think it brings and shines a light and help maybe someone who's been putting it off go. Mm -hmm. So, but like I said, I think it's because of the mortality. Like you got to look at the fact that like, yo, you're human. And, you know, one day we all pass away, but you know, keep your health together. Well, I see you shaking your head and laugh <laughs> because your friend down here at the corner, just sent us a picture of Joe line stepping in the chat. He ain't gonna say yeah, yeah. He he he's being a habitual line stepper in the chat. Send us a picture of, of a Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> but you he looks good on that suit. Yeah, yeah. He he does look good in that movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you you are correct though. Uh, big brother, we we do as black men and men of color, we do need to go to the doctor because we yeah. have a we have a lot of things that are passed on to us that we don't even know. Hyper, yeah. No, hyper, and then it's sad when you. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying. No hypertension, diabetes. You know, cancer. There's things that may be sleep that may not wake up until you get a certain age. Or until you actually go and they find it, or you could have prevented it if you had, if you hadn't skipped so many of your annual physicals and checkups and things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important, like if whoever's listening to this show at this moment, if you if you find yourself skipping these things, you need to just go ahead and make that appointment and show up for it this time. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. It's uh, as it says. Health is wealth. Very, very important. So make sure y'all go to y'all yearly or six month checkups. Kings and queens, both of y'all go. And can uh, I just add something to that? What's up? And just make sure, you, like, your dental appointments are very important too, to make mm -hmm. sure that you are, you know, because, you know, just make sure, like, people don't realize that. You know, all that stuff is connected. So make sure you show up for your dental appointments for cleanings and things like that, too. Yeah, I I don't know if y'all remember me saying I didn't real I didn't know that like the tartar buildup affects your cholesterol. Yeah. And and so like now when I go to the dentist, you know, they they actually look at that stuff, like your blood pressure and your cholesterol reads, and they, it's like it, like you said, it now it's like one big connection. But back then, it yeah. didn't. Back then, you was just going to get your teeth clean. It had nothing to do with you know. They didn't make it seem like it was relatable. You know what I mean? So, um, let's see. All right. I think we're gonna um start wrapping it up. So I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm gonna finish this off with this question. J Dot, what's something you thought you were good at, but in reality you at, at in reality you 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 not. You wanna wrap the show up with this? That's a long list. <laughs> uh I I probably I I thought I was a better singer than I, I. I was at one point. I was a, I was a uh, first soprano probably up until like the eighth or ninth grade, and then my voice changed, and I lost all of that. I still sometimes I hear a Brian McKnight, McKnight song, and I wanna, I wanna try my hand at it, but it's, it's, 
It's, it's not there. I got to give it up. Mm. Just don't don't ride in the car with me because it's it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> See, I I thought you was gonna talk, you no, know, kind of touch on your your short term of a tennis player. What, what, what was that? You being a tennis player. What's going on here? <laughs> Wait, J does start blinking. <laughs> like, excuse me, you brought this up on air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I played tennis a couple times, and I I think. I also played chess, and I think I, I, used, I told my wife at one point I was like ranked in the city in chess, mm -hmm. and we must have been having a conversation around the same time I told her about the tennis. So she thought she started telling people I was ranked in the city in tennis, and so that like, people, <laughs> random folks, was like, "Oh, we should play, we should play." I'm like, no, we shouldn't. I know I'm not good at that. Never was. She 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 set you up for that one. Yeah, she. I said got people that still want to get a game in with me, and I'm like, yeah, you know. The way my knees work these days, I don't know if we should go out there. <laughs> hey man, you you may you may actually be better than what you think you are, man. You may be top in the city. Now, I'm one of those dudes that's a I'm Barry Bonds with a tennis racket. Everything oh. I swing at is going oh, way shit. over the fence somewhere. <laughs> Big brother, what about you? Uh gymnastics. I was kind of all right, but you know, I, in my mind, I was like, oh, I can do this. I can do everything and yeah my flips were just a little bit too slow <laughs> gymnastics i need to write yeah, brother, yeah. The, i need to write this i gotta write this down something like that or the uneven bar i can see it i can see it yeah was you yeah what, I, you know said it again was you one of the guys that will hold the cheerleaders from the bottom or the, no, or the no 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 not one of those type of gymnastics i was like mindset like I wonder if I can make the Olympics, mm. like gymnastics. But my flips, you know, were a little too slow. And, you know, the difficult ones, you know, you kind of, I would kind of hesitate in a little bit, you know. But, yeah, no. Nah, but gymnastics, I thought I was better than what I really was, you know. I, I needed a little bit more. I needed a little bit more confidence and a little bit more speed when I was going to, you know, do those flips. Are you still flipping? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that uh, that can be taken in any type of con but if for this conversation was meant for this question. Well, I'm I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a flight down to your house <laughs> and just do a couple backflips all through your living room. <laughs> I think the audience wants to see it. I think yeah, the yeah we want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. to figure out a way to cut off your head. Right <laughs> we'll 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 give him a mascot outfit. There, there we go. We'll give him a mascot outfit. We're, we'll get him the Black Panther <laughs> mascot outfit. Yeah. That's what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Joe, what about you? Uh, something that I would... Uh, um, I thought I was better. I thought I was good at fishing. Mm. But apparently I'm not that good. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, I done a lot of fishing, but never caught a fish. So, isn't that crazy? I mean, I had a boat, a bass boat. I'll be out there fishing every other day at night, fishing on the weekends, all kinds of <laughs> Never caught a fish. But I thought I was really good at fishing, but I was like, damn, I bought all kinds of stuff, an expensive reel and all kinds of shit, and uh turns out that I suck at fishing. So. You're, good at, you're good at relaxing. You're good at chilling. Yeah. What's going yeah. on? I just see Joe. I just see Joe breaking that rod like <laughs> so <laughs> frustrated. I tried everything, man. WD forty, worms, hot dogs. Did you say WD forty? WD forty, man. There was this. Uh, I was at a real quick. I know we have, we got to go, but uh, there was this. I used to fish in some ponds once in a while, and uh, I was out there fishing. So this Native American man, uh, like you're doing it wrong. Like, I have a Native American trick. And I was like, okay. So I, I don't know what the hell he was going to do, right? Like, do some weird stuff. So he's all like, check this out. So he grabbed the worm, and he sprayed WD-40, and he threw it out there, and he caught this enormous catfish. He's like, this works everywhere. So the I Native started. American trick was, like, pollute the lake? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Is it? I, I was like, all right. Well, yeah, okay. I was going to say, so are you still going to eat the fish, even though you're using WD-40? I mean. I don't know. He, he was keeping them. Okay. He was taking all of that fish home, and I was like, "Holy shit!" So I tried it, and uh, it didn't didn't work. So I tried like, every kinds of lure there's out there. I mean, I have a tackle box that's huge that 
I've never caught in a fish ever. Mm. Caught a fish. Mm. So, I think that's the new challenge. People are gonna start sending in videos of, of themselves creating WD forty on worms. Yeah, Let's see what they can catch. No, people gonna start googling. Should I spray WD forty on this one? <laughs> right. I guess it attracts like the fish or something. It's kind of like when the I heard of like <laughs> fishing with a light. Uh, when you shine the light, I tried that shit too. It does. So wait, Joe, you never caught any fish? I never caught a fish, never, oh, never. Man. And I've I've, brought, I've taken people with me because, you know, I used to do a lot of fishing. Well, I used to do a lot of hanging out, like J Dot said. <laughs> and uh, you just people for the will bird. show up and they'll catch something. Yeah, the fish just didn't like you, Joe. They, they just like, oh, don't like Joe. me, so I just chill and have a have a beer and smoke a cigar while everybody catches the fish on my boat. <laughs> man, that's that's <laughs> persistence. That is, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You never gave up. That's that's to be commended right there. Yeah. Not too recently. I decided to put it away, and that once in a while, if we're out there camping or something, I'll take take it out to pretend to fish. I was gonna I was gonna ask because y'all go camping, so evidently y'all not well, surviving. You, gonna do it. you not surviving I on y'all on you fishing and giving them. Feeding the family fish, so y'all just what doing like some fish sticks or something? I don't. Yeah. I mean, air frying. Yeah, no, we 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 do the. I take the food, the steak, <laughs> and the hamburgers, and that's what we that's what we grill out there where we camp. Because if it, if it was up to me to catch food out of a lake, <laughs> everybody's gonna starve because I suck at fish. Fast. Yeah, no, that's wow. Yeah, so well. I'm for me. I w- I've been thinking. Um, the only thing I can, the only thing that comes to mind right now is volleyball. I used to love playing volleyball as a kid. Yeah, I don't know why, but it was just something that I, I enjoyed doing. You know, hitting the hitting the balls. <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah, I can't. I can't really think of anything. I'm not saying I'm a perfectionist, but I can't just think of anything that I. The only thing. Okay, okay. I'm gonna do it because it's the end of the show. The only thing I can think of is like. <laughs> You know how like everybody wants to be a porno star, yeah, and like you, you, you don't really, <laughs> you don't, <laughs> you don't really look as good as you think you do. But dang it, <laughs> you look in the mirror, <laughs> you like shit. He waited to the end of the show. <laughs> what? What am I? <laughs> she likes this shit. Look at me. This is how you know he ain't home. No way he would said that. J Dot, everything just went through my mind when she heard this episode. Yeah, this is the time to jump in, J Dot. <laughs> you all on you all by yourself. Right? That conversation at all. All right. Well, all right. Any last words? Any last comments? Anybody? <laughs> Well, we apologize if anyone was offended. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just want to say to, to Raw Sass, because I'm sure you're going to listen to this. Like I, I had to let it slide, man. These these are different. These are different kind of people. I can't <laughs> people every five minutes, man. Understand. Uh, so, any uh, closing remarks? Any comments, Kings? That was good. Uh, was- well, welcome to the first episode. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, oh. yep. It's gonna be fun. Yes, 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 yes. That was a good one, y'all. Uh, Worse. Really, <laughs> really <laughs> learn something. You know what? I'm gonna just wrap it up. Uh, Till next time, <laughs> keys and queen. We appreciate you turning in to the League of Kings podcast. Stay connected between episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Good Pods for extra content. Find us on YouTube at The League of Kings Podcast and on TikTok at The League of Kings Podcast. Until next time, keep exploring society and culture with us.